Hello and welcome. In this video, I want to briefly introduce you to the idea of structural violence. Structural violence is a term which was coined by Johann Galtung. He was the first worldwide peace and conflict researcher who in the 1960s started to do his amazing work around peace and peace search research. He therefore received also the Right Livelihood Award, which is a kind of alternative Peace Nobel Prize. In 1967, he published one paper, Violence, Peace and Peace Research, in which he first time talked about structural violence. And what is the key insights of this paper I want to introduce to you today. So he makes some distinction between violence and he distinguishes physical violence, which can be of anatomic, anatomic way, where you hit someone or squeeze someone or tear off something, versus physiological uh, manner, where you say the violence is uh, lack of water or lack of movement or lack of access to food, for example. And then on the other side, we have psychological violence, which he describes as any violence which increases the mental potentialities. So also, for example, fear policies and fear media, uh, which puts a lot of fear in the mind of people, uh, which is then decreasing their mental potentialities and maybe even their immune system, could be named under psychological violence. The next differentiation he makes saying whether there is a subject, so a person who acts in this violent act or not. So if there is not a person, he would call it a structural violence because there is not one actor, there is not one perpetrator, but it's simply uh, a structural problem which is causing violence. So he says even if it's a structural problem, if there is no one who is like uh, to blame for directly as one person who was the actor, he says still individuals may be killed or mutilated, hit or hurt and manipulated. So what he refers to is, for example, if people are starving because they don't have access to food, um, or if people um, are getting hurt because there has not been any proper uh, precaution, uh, let's say a highway is just ending in the middle of nowhere and you would just run down with your road with your car on the road. The next distinction he draws is saying, is uh, the violence avoidable versus unavoidable? So um, he would then look here really into the time pattern and saying maybe 300 years ago, if there was, uh, if there was a drought somewhere in Africa and there were just all the, all the villages all, would all face the same problem and not have any food, he would call it unavoidable because in that case, if people would starve to death, there was simply no way to help it out. But for example, in the 21st centuries where we have international logistic change and we know very well what's happening, if then someone is starving, he would consider it being avoidable. The last distinction he draws is intended versus unintended violence. So he is looking into, has there been an intention? And when it comes to physical and direct violence, when there is an uh, where there is a perpetrator, where there is a, a subject uh, making the violence or, or enacting the violence, then this is a very, comp a very, very um, important uh, legal term for declaring whether a person has been guilty or not. But especially when it comes to structural violence, it doesn't decrease the intensity of structural violence depend no matter whether it was intended or unintended. So structural violence can be as cruel or is as much violence, even though the person who created the structure or the system or the historical uh, setting in which the structure was created did never intend to harm someone. I choose the picture here of a blind person because I think that's something which we are now in the middle of seeing. We are waking it up seeing, okay, we actually, with our economic system, uh, we have created a lot of structural violence uh, or global social system, globalization, etc., has created a lot of structural violence in the past years, decades, centuries even, uh, if you would look so. But now I think that we're getting aware of it. It would turn from unintended to intended, even though it wasn't our acting, but maybe it's time now to act. Um, the last distinction which he draws is saying, well, is there an object that is hurt? So he says violence can also go tar against things, for example. So if you go and destroy a rock, like it's, is it still violent or violence or not? And he would say, yes, you would also still consider this violence because 
you're like creating a system and you're creating a social relationship in which you're threatening. So even though nothing really, no one has been hurt, um, still there is this threatening in the room and therefore he still would consider it violence. The last distinction which he draws is saying is the uh, violence manifest versus latence. So we see here the pictures, maybe you all saw them uh, of, of uh, America this year, which is a very clear example of a manifest uh, violence existing versus latent violence. He would differentiate is, is the difference between the actual and the potential for realization of the best realization possible, so the best life, the best quality of life, but also the best duration of life you two can have. And if there is a difference between the actual and the potential, he would call this violence. So for example, if uh, racism is, get, is increasing in the country due to a political movement or due to a trend or uh, new norms or regulations, then this would also be considered violence because it decreases the the potential which, for example, black people could have in America, um, their actual potential they would have uh, and it would be considered violence. Theoretically, he also says it would be violence if there is an increase in potential but no increase in actual. So, for example, uh, on a long time, we could say if over centuries uh, the lifespan has been increasing considerably if still a certain population still has the same lifespan as like 100 years ago, it would also be considered violence. So overall, we have seen uh, that there have been different types of violence. He would consider, he would consider um, violence according to whether there is, it's physical or it's uh, psychological, whether there is an object or not, whether there is a subject or not, so structural, versus direct violence and whether it's uh, manifest or whether it's latent. And I think for uh, looking into the economic problems which we have nowadays, particularly the structural violence, is something which I would like to explore with you more in one of the future videos.